There's a road in Hamilton that connects Ancaster to Stony Creek. It's a great way across the Hamilton Mountain, and it's the longest stretch of dedicated cycling lane you can currently find in the city. The road I'm talking about is Stone Church Road. Let's get cycling. We begin our journey starting in Ancaster. And because Stone Church is so long, I have sped up the footage 25%. I typically travel around 32 kilometers an hour, so it will seem like I am traveling at 40 kilometers an hour. That being said, it doesn't take that long when traveling 32 kilometers an hour to get from Ancaster to Stony Creek, which is what the huge benefit of Stone Church is. It connects Ancaster, Meadowlands Ancaster, to Heritage Green in Upper Stony Creek. It goes through all of Hamilton Mountain and it's just a major artery for the city. Luckily, the entire route has a dedicated lane. So the route scores extremely high. I was actually very surprised at the score that it received and I had to do the, uh, the math several times over just because I was so surprised, but it received a 95%, which is an A grade. And that's just with the dedicated lanes and it doesn't have any protected lanes. It could definitely benefit from a few protected lanes and sections. Ideally, the whole route would be nice as a protected lane, but key, key areas might be good to have, you know, focus on first and make them a little bit safer. Anyway, we are entering into Hamilton uh, roughly about now. Uh, I believe we exit out of Ancaster around this moment. And this is a bit of an incline. It's not overly uh, bad. There is other sections that are slightly steeper. I think this is maybe a two degree in decline. Uh, there is sections that uh, go up to three degrees of an incline. Up ahead, we have a traffic circle. It's the only traffic circle on this road. You'll see that the path actually brings you onto the sidewalk, but the transition isn't nice. You kind of have to do a little s swerve. Uh, the other side has this path as well, except there is an opening where Omni Boulevard is. The transition back onto the road is decent on this side. It's just that other section, it could have been improved. Uh, one of the main reasons why Stone Church receives such a high grade is just because of all the neighborhoods that the road connects to and the limited number of streets that intersect with it. The more streets that intersect with it, it can lose points because that's more chances that a car could hit you from the side or like turn in front of you. But it has, it has enough. It definitely gets you to like all the Upper Paradise, Upper James, Upper Wellington, Wentworth, so forth and so on. But there is some other streets that it connects to and it can bring you into neighborhoods. It connects to 24 neighborhoods. Uh, either side of the road is a different neighborhood. Uh, it is a dividing line between neighborhoods. And, oh, before we continue on with the neighborhood, hidden car behind this van. Hope it wasn't backing out. That is one thing I don't like about this street. There's parking on, on the boulevard section between the sidewalk and the road. And the cars just seem a little too close. Mm. Any one of these cars could back out. Um... I really hope that people that live here or visit these people do not just pull out blindly and hopefully they do it nice and slowly. I don't know if there is something we can do to fix that because we definitely like to keep the grass. The more grass we have, the better. I wouldn't want to turn that into paved parking uh, because then you would lose the grass. Uh, this is probably the only section where there isn't a dedicated lane here on Garth Street. 
But then on the other side of the road, it starts back up again. It's just on that west side of Garth Street that you kind of get a shared area. Doesn't really lose that many points, considering it is 11.3 kilometers long and it's only a few dozen meters where, um, where it's just a regular road. Doesn't lose a lot of points. But yeah, uh, 24 neighborhoods. Uh, it goes, again, from Ancaster all the way to Upper Stony Creek. There's technically a 25th neighborhood, but there is no road connection to it. Uh, there's just a bit of the forest just before we get to Omni all the way back at the beginning. There is a 25th neighborhood. Uh, I believe it's called Lampman. There's no connection to it, so I, I can't rightfully give it that one extra point. But this is a very relaxing route. It took me 26 minutes to travel from end to end. And if you've ever had to ride the bus from Stony Creek to Ancaster or Ancaster to Stony Creek, it takes an hour at least. Uh, at least where I used to live, it would take an hour. I, I lived in Upper Stony Creek. It had to zigzag all around Upper Stony Creek, the, uh, the Stone Church bus, and then it gets on the Stone Church and then it stops at the mall, and then it continues on to Ancaster, and it would take an hour. So you can do this in 26 minutes on an e-bike. A little bit longer if you are just using your own pedaling power. I do myself enjoy my e-bike. I, I do find that I am benefiting from it. Yes, pedaling yourself would be more exercise, but I don't really bike to exercise. I bike to get out and see the the city, go places. Uh, we had just passed West Fifth, which there was an episode on that. West Fifth uh, definitely has potential to be a very good bike route. And up ahead we have Upper James. I would say take West Fifth over Upper James because Upper James is busy. There's a lot of traffic. There's a lot of businesses, cars coming in and out. Uh, so I do feel that West Fifth is the better option, and that is something that the city needs to upgrade. Uh, make the lanes a little bit safer. But yeah, um, if you want to see the speed that I was traveling at, I believe there's an option for 75% on YouTube. In the bottom right hand corner, I think there's a little cog, you can click it and change the speed to 75%. And I'll be roughly traveling at 30 kilometers an hour when I was really traveling at 32. Uh, the reason why I did 25% is because of the frame rate. I went from 24 frames to 30 frames, uh, but that's just a technical aspect. But as you can see, this is a very comfortable route. It's nice when you have the sidewalk right next to you because you don't have to worry about those cars backing up and uh, blocking you because other cars are parked. But yeah, definitely you could in include plastic flags, the marker flags with concrete curb, curb stops and maybe put them in from time to time especially closer to intersections you'll see towards the end of the video there's a car at a traffic light and it stops it's uh, several cars back from the front of the line and it starts going into the bike lane and I have to you know squeeze by it uh, because it decided, oh, I, I'm, I'm turning right, so I'm going to start, you know, moving over. But if we had those curb stops uh, briefly before an intersection, it would stop cars from pulling that maneuver. And it would make it a lot safer for bicyclists to pull up and be at the front of the line so that they don't have to wait behind the cars. Also, you don't have to worry about a car suddenly pulling in front of you as you're cycling uh, towards that front. So here we are. We are about halfway done, I believe. Uh, I consider Upper Wentworth to be about the halfway point. 
And that might just be because when I used to take the Stone Church bus, it always felt like the halfway point because the bus would turn left onto Upper Wentworth uh, from this direction, stop at the mall for a while, and then it would come back and then continue on. The Stone Church bus route was definitely a, a bus that I rode often in my youth when I used to live in Upper Stony Creek. I based my jobs on that bus. I would say, oh, I can get to Limeridge Mall or I can get to Meadowlands on the bus. And I would choose jobs based on that. And it makes me really happy that this is now a decent bike route. And it's an important bike route because it connects so many neighborhoods. Whenever there is a major road that connects as many neighborhoods as this does, it's important and we need to have safe cycling routes for people to get to where they need to go. So that is why this bike route scores so highly. And at first, because I did the math and it got a 95%, I was thinking, oh, maybe it's because this is one of my favorite streets and it has the most nostalgia for me. Uh, because it's something that I rode often to get to the mall, uh, just to shop or to the mall to work. But uh, no, it's it's the neighborhoods. I think when urban planners are planning out where to put the next bike route, they need to look at, you know, is this a a road that connects a lot of neighborhoods? And if it is then it needs to be prioritized to have cycling lanes, at least dedicated cycling lanes on these major roads. You can get away with having sharrows on less used streets, but on something like this, you need the dedicated lanes and preferably have sections of protected lanes. Other things to take into consideration is the space between the sidewalk and the road, if there's enough space for cars to feel like they can comfortably park there, people need to realize people will park there. And so perhaps the other side of the road might be better to have a double bike lane as opposed to two split single lanes. It just makes people feel a little bit more comfortable. The Residents that live on the side that have those extended driveways can take advantage of it and not lose their driveway parking. And then you also don't have to pave over grass. Uh, we definitely don't want to be widening these roads any further than they've already been widened. But yeah, like you can see on this side, there's ample space of the driveway extension that you can park on. But on the other side, on the left-hand side, there's not. So it might have been better for Stone Church to maybe be a double bike lane on the north side of the road. It doesn't necessarily always work because perhaps it alternates between one and the other. And then if it does that, then okay, maybe the two single lanes is best. But from what I can see and what I've noticed cycling down this road, it just seems to be the houses on the south side of the road, on the right-hand side uh, to us. But anyways, we are now at Upper Ottawa. It's a fairly large plaza that's here. And it's uh, there's there's lots and lots of commercial areas along Stone Church. And it makes it's another thing that makes Stone Church so appealing for people to be cycling on. There's all these businesses. There's all these neighborhoods you can connect to. There are parks and there are trails that connect to it. Up ahead we have the Chippewa Trail, which I believe the full name might be the Chippewa Electric Rail Trail. Uh, but I will just be referring to it as the Chippewa Trail. It connects directly to Stone Church, and there is also a road that crosses over the link and connects to the Escarpment Rail Trail, which is not too far away, the Red Hill uh, Valley 
trail system isn't too far away. Although I do recommend not cycling the Red Hill Valley trail system. There are some steep sections, loose rocks. There's definitely a section that says get off your bike and walk it. It is way too dangerous. Uh, but then there's also these pavers that are on the trail system. And if, if you see those pavers, I highly recommend that you get off your bike and walk it. There was definitely a time that I rode and I was like, oh, it's a descent. It's fine. There's these pavers. I can apply the brakes. I won't slip and slide. I was slipping and sliding. Anyways, off to the right, there is the Chippewa Trail, and that goes all the way down to Caledonia. It is definitely a route that I want to try one day, although I am not physically fit enough to be doing it yet. Uh, perhaps I will buy a second battery and that will help me get there and back because I think that would be a very fun trip. Alongside us, there is this newly paved section and it actually connects the Escarpment Rail Trail to the Chippewa Trail. And it is a shared path. It is a, a sidewalk for pedestrians, but it is also a bike trail. Uh, there is connections to the Mount Albion Trail, just to the right here. And the Mount Albion Trail leads on to Anchor and then ultimately Pritchard to the left. If you turn left on to Arbor, that brings you to the Escarpment Rail Trail, just right there. It brings you over this bridge, connects you right to the Escarpment Rail Trail, and then also to the Red Hill Valley Trail System. Again, I highly recommend leaving that to pedestrians. Or if you're going to go there on your bike, just walk for most of it. And uh, if you see those pavers on any section, get off your bike and walk it. Because I definitely had some issues with that. And I have a electric mountain bike. <laughs> so, yeah, avoid those systems. Pritchard Road can also bring you to the Mountain Brow Road or Mountain Brow Boulevard. It uh, connects to the Escarpment Rail Trail. It uh, connects to the Red Hill Valley Trail System. It is not my favorite road to go down. It's kind of narrow. Cars like to zip down it. Take Arbor. It is so much better. And uh, we are just about in Stony Creek. Actually, Stone Church doesn't go into Stony Creek. There's that car that uh, is in the bike lane. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't go into Stony Creek. It stops and it becomes paramount. But it does connect to Stony Creek. But here we are in the Heritage Green Mega Plaza system. There's tons and tons of stores and there's even more being built. And... Uh, yeah, I, I tend to come here quite often because one of my friends from high school, he still lives in the area. And so I bike here. And so this is a road that I still use quite often. So it's not only is it nostalgic for me, but it's, it's still one that's in use. Here we are at the end. We are now entering Paramount Drive. Paramount Drive is also a decent road to travel on as it does have a dedicated lane. It loops around on itself and then becomes Winterberry, which also has a dedicated lane. And that leads you to Highland Road, which also has a dedicated lane. But these are all roads that we will have to discuss in another video. Take care.